I am gonna take my 2021 CRF 300L and convert it into a supermoto, the sick hooligan machine of the streets. Ah. And we're gonna show you step by step how exactly to do that, what parts are needed. But you may be saying, Jake, what is a supermoto and what are the benefits? Well, I'm glad you asked. I take it for granted because I've been into supermoto since before they were cool. I throw the term out there so regularly. People uh, buy dual sports and think that they're supermotos. The core of a supermoto to me is some kind of dirt bike thing, okay? When we go to a supermoto setup, we remove our dirt wheels and replace them with, this could be really funny from this angle, I'm already a, a horrible artist. <laughs> We replace those big wheels with 17 inch rims, front and rear, and usually a bit wider than the factory rims as well. The simplest reason why is because you can put street bike size tires on there and they're gonna have a lot more grip. More grip means we can turn faster, brake harder, accelerate, everything on the street is much improved. But if it was just that, we could just throw grippier tires on the big wheels. That smaller 17 inch rims, especially in the front where it's a drastic difference and you're really pushing on the front when you turn, that will change directions much, much quicker. We're also bringing the entire bike down a little bit. We're lowering it. When you go to super mode setup, it's going to steepen that fork angle, pointing the forks more down than out. That again is going to add to a very, very fast handling bike. It's going to make the bike very easy to flick back and forth into turns. When you add all those improvements up, the 17s make a drastic difference to the bike's handling. The really tight turns, suggested 20s, and suggested 10 mile an hour turns, Supermoto will eat a sport bike up out there. They are awesome. Beyond a sport bike, you spend hundreds of dollars to go to a track day. Supermoto, you can spend 25 bucks and go to a go-kart track. You have way more fun with way less risk most of the time too. You're not going 150 miles an hour, you're going like 50 miles an hour. The Supermoto around town is one of the funnest bikes you can have. Even a heavy Supermoto is probably like 100 pounds lighter than most street bikes. And supermotos are the most hooligan bike you'll have ever ridden. I can't tell you how many friends of mine that were calm, chill riders got a supermoto and man, they started popping wheelies. It's fun, it's easy. Also, it takes such a more beating than a normal sport bike because it's a dirt bike at its core. These bikes are so forgiving. How many bikes can you be hard breaking into a turn, lock the front, let off and just get back into it? The one thing that, of course, everyone's worried about when you go to supermoto setup is what about off-roading? Haven't you just ruined the bike now? You'd be surprised at how much off-roading you can do in Supermoto trim. Most of the time, if you just slow down a little, you can still do just about everything you did before. In fact, sometimes it's even a little more fun because it's a bit more challenging. Now, if it comes to sand and mud, you better find another way to go. But that should give you a basic understanding of what a Supermoto is. Smaller wheels, turning in faster, lots of grip, lots of fun, crazy hooligan street bike machine. They could take a beating. So let's check out the actual equipment we're gonna use to do this conversion. Chain sprocket setup. Why do we need to mess with the chain sprockets? Well, when you go to a supermoto setup, you are going from, a, in our case, an 18 to a 17. So we have geared the bike a little shorter in this case. Some people don't care. It makes the bike a little easier to wheelie. But if you want to have the same sort of capabilities it had, you know, on the highway, open roads, you want to get the gearing kind of close to what it was. Usually that means either going down in the rear or up in the front. Uh, in the case of the 300L, it has a 40 tooth already on its stock. 40 is pretty small. The 40 is about as small as you want to go. So we chose to go the other way. So we have a 15 tooth front sprocket. We got this from Revzilla. They've been setting up with a lot of parts on this build. So big thanks to them. And we've got this EK chain. It's some kind of X something, XZ ring. God, they're getting so crazy with it. I don't know if you can tell from here, but it's red. Most likely you'll have to look into that chain of sprockets for your bike. Brake pads, we got these Galfer Brake pads, again, from Revzilla. Big thanks again to them as well. But one of these are a little bit better brake pads in general. Also, because I want to be swapping setups regularly, I want to go back and forth, you do want to have a dedicated pad, set of pads for each set of rotors. Let me show you the real thing that you guys want to see. Warp 9's helped us out in the past with the XR650R build. I reached out to them about this 300 build and they were happy to help us again. So big thanks to them. Warp 9's got a really cool site there where you can go on there, plug your bike in, and really pick between all these different cool colors, the wheels, you can have different hubs and spokes and everything. Let me show you what we got. <laughs> oh, we went forged. I always sort of stayed away from these because very rigid wheels on a supermoto normally is a bad idea. However, I've spoken to Cole who runs the moto store. He sells Warp 9 wheels and a few other people and they've said they've had almost no problems with me. Let's go for it. Obviously you get a full tubeless system with this. I think they're gonna be a little lighter being the, this design. They just look so cool. We got them in this crazy blue to go with all the colors, you know. 
Uh, I thought about red, but I was like, nah, this blue just pops so much better in my opinion. Also, you see we've gone for the option of having a mountain balance them with tires and sitting them out like this. These things are gonna look insane. Here, look at the rear one. It's been killing me because these things have been sitting in my garage for uh, what, over like two months or something now. I've been wanting to put them on so bad. Warp 9 is really a good setup because like I said, not only can you order them with mountain balanced tires, they come with their own rotors. The rear rotor is a wave rotor, which is gonna be, it's the same size as stock, but that should help dissipate the heat a little better. Front, we get this massive 320 millimeter rotor and you get a relocation bracket. Now, if you wanna know why a larger rotor gives you more braking power without going back over the board, the quick explanation is, you can dissipate more heat easier because you have more surface area. And think of it like a lever. Take your disc and take it down to a single point. Pretend it's this ratchet. I'm trying to move this little guy versus this one. Which one am I gonna have more power with? This is actually pretty simple to do. We're basically doing a chain and sprocket setup and we're gonna be doing a set of wheels. There's a few other little things with clearance stuff we need to mess with while we're in there. I'm gonna start with the rear. Let's knock this out. Let's get this done and have a supermoto. I probably won't be able to run this in the supermoto setup anyway. The clearance between this, this chain guard and the tire is very tight fairly useful to have. And to remove a chain, normally what we would do is we'd roll the wheel around here and look for a master link. It would have some sort of clip on it, or it even may be a riveted one. But if your bike has never had the chain replaced, has the OEM chain, you may have the situation that we have here. There is no master link. A chain breaking tool on one of these full rivets isn't gonna work. What we're gonna need to do is actually grind the heads down on two of these. You can't even hardly see the rivets anymore, which is what you're going for. You clamp this on there tightly, then we push this pin forward in there, and it'll force that rivet out the back side. Should be enough. Oh, there it goes. All right. Let's pop off the front sprocket cover. It's two eight millimeters. Oh yeah, look at that. Look. WD-40. Blast that around in there, let that kind of work. While we, while we do work, it'll do work. This may look a little different to you if you're not used to this setup. Sort of two bolts and this thing that locks in. I like this because it just, you don't have to worry about stripping out a giant nut on this shaft that goes inside the engine. You can also get away with not really holding the sprocket down if you use a fast impact. And through the power of being able to turn a camera off and back on, bam, magically it's all clean. <laughs> this is our 15 tooth and I was pulling out of the box at the package and said, yeah, this looks a little weird. And I definitely won't fit. I think this is a ground 15 tooth. Whoops. In the morning, I will call around, see if I can find a 15 tooth. If I can't, we'll just run the 14 tooth. We'll move over to the rear brake in the meantime. We're not gonna actually change the pads right now. We have this pin in here that holds the pads. And once you, we actually have everything apart, trying to change this, like you have to hold it in your hand, like it's a real pain. So we just want to go and crack this loose. All right, just leave it loose. I've got these T-Rex sliders, so I need to pull those off next. In order to take the axle out, we actually need a 24 on this side and a 17 on this side. So what we need to do is we need to pull our spacers out, pop them in here. Now one of the big problems you'll run into putting a rear supermoto wheel on is your chain guide. Because our wheel's wider, it's very hard to not rub into this. Last thing we want to do is scratch our pretty new rim up. There's a really easy solution to it, especially with this bike. We just pop it off while we install the wheel. Go back to our brake here, go ahead and pull this pin out. Slip these guys in there. Pins cleaned off. You don't want to put any like grease or anything on this. It seemed like that'd be the thing to do, but you, want, you don't want to do that. Tan tight that. Don't forget to fully tighten this flathead screwdriver and just kind of gently make sure that they're opened up. I'm not like trying to pry against them, just seat them properly. Let's put that wheel on.
Now this is more firm, we can bolt this down. Put our little dust cap back on. Put the chain guide back on. Hey look, I'm wearing my Big Red Pig merch. This is a Big Red Pig too. Go to thegarnsnake.com, you can get you a shirt like that. Also to see the real version of this video, it's longer, ad-free, uncensored, go over to Patreon and check out the Patreon version of this video. If you do, be sure to link to the Discord so you can come chat with us in there. I have some calling around and even a little bit of running around today in that 15 tooth sprocket. No one seems to have one of those, it's a weird size. Continue on with this 14 right now. Hey, Dan Knooners, right? This bike's got a pretty long six gear, we'd probably be okay. These new chains. They're always so greasy. I usually just put them on the bike and then try to wipe them down on the bike. Let's see if we can't clean it a little bit before we stick it on, right? So I got all these extra links. And what I need to do is grind down the heads of these two rivets, just like I did before. I find it's always easiest just to let these rest on the sprocket. See, they just kind of hold in place. These chain kits always come with a thing of grease. I think it's the same kind of grease that's in all these rollers. My finger on the back side here, just kind of push some down in this. there, put some around the inside and outside. There's some, there's some mayonnaise right here. It came with a rivet style link. I ended up ordering a mass uh, clip style because I want to be able to swap this on and off. Now the clip is like gold, a master clip, uh, but I can use the red front from the other one. So at least it'll be red on this side. Stick your O-rings on one side. My thumbs over it while I push this down. And, oh yeah, like it just squishes out everywhere. It's awesome and disgusting. <gasps> Two more O-rings that go on the other side. Take the other side and we can push this on and it won't go all the way, it'll just kind of go about like that. Is use a chain tool, a couple different tools in here. This one will push from the back side. This one's got holes in it to let the rivets through. But we wanna push this just enough to expose groove on the pins to let a clip go into. Look into these holes and see that I'm over the pins or not. Kinda watch that as we go down. Might be enough, almost. It's better to check it numerous times and to overpress it, because if you overpress it, it's really tricky to push it back. You want the clip to be going in the direction the chain is going, so there's no chance this ever snags anything and pulls off. This way, if it snags anything, it snags it and pulls it on more. And loosen these guys up a little bit. Over two and a half, so let's tighten that up a little bit. Should be good. Lining the wheel too, there's some notches down here in the bottom. Make the left side and the right side the same. One of the main things here is to make sure that we're straight along the chain. It's kind of hard to see because there's some slack in it. So what you can do is you can take a paper towel like this and pull it into the chain just a little bit. And that's a big indicator. You wanna make sure this looks nice and straight. Move the nut out to the middle. Check from the back face of this to the surface of here. They're both dead on. Leaving that rag in there tight will help cinch it up on both sides. I don't have to necessarily torque it right this second, I just need to snug it down so it holds that in place. One of these bolts is a little longer than the other and I'm pretty sure the longer one goes in the top because this, this piece of casing is longer. But whenever you're not sure, run them down by hand. You run it down, there's still a gap in that bolt, like it hasn't come down all the way, then you got them in the wrong spot. I've seen people drive bolts through the back of engines before. That one bottomed out, no problems. That one bottomed out, that case is good on there, so we'll just snug her down now. There you go. The only other thing that can be good to do when putting a supermoto setup on the back is try to space the muffler out a little bit. There's a single bolt, get a spacer and a little bit longer bolt and kind of pull the thing out. I've tried doing it with this one and it is really, really not happy to do that. There's a possibility when this tire comes all the way up, it may rub the side of the exhaust. Even when you space them out a little bit, that kind of can tend to happen. But we have an aftermarket exhaust. It should be here soon enough. And when that's here, those are a little bit easier to, to move. And we have half of a supermoto. Look at that. It's looking pretty good. I mean, it looks kind of awkward right now, but I gotta remove my T-Rex sliders. Curious about these. We've got a video on them. They are very nice. Come from a local place around here in Dallas called T-Rex Racing. Always good to have some crash protection. Loosen up our pinch bolts. 
Now this axle doesn't have an other side, it's just threaded in, but to take it off, you will need a big 14 millimeter Allen. It's kind of odd, but that's what she uses. And when we get about here, you can kind of, as you're coming out, you can kind of twist the other fork out of the way and get your brake out. And there you go. We're gonna have to modify our fork guards to fit the supermoto wheel. So we're gonna go and remove the brake over on this side. This is the relocation bracket from Warp 9. This is what spaces the caliper out to take the bigger rotor. The reason it's already on the bike is I wanted to run a large rotor even in the dirt setup. I'm a crazy man like that. So I've got two of those rotors, that way I can just sort of quick swap between setups. Yeah, this one's a little different, but just loosen it like that. We'll mess it up more later. So we're gonna pop this off. Fork guards are a good thing to have because they protect this metal tube in here, this is the inner you know, fork tube. Rock chips would be very detrimental to this because those are sliding past the seal and going up inside of oil. So we want to keep these on there. But we said, you see how there's some bits that come out like this and come out on this side? I'm just going to trim off the extra flap that cuts sticks out on the inside. That should get us nice and happy for our supermoto wheel. I put a piece of masking tape, got kind of a straight edge here and another at the bottom. Let's take another random straight edge. I had to cut quite a bit of plastic in the last video, and this thing actually was really easy to do it with. Because it's curved, you gotta watch out that the top part doesn't get in. I've had to raise the, whatever this thing's called, way up. I don't know, I'm not a tiller scrapographer. And I think I could chop it without chopping my fingers off. Yeah, screw it, you know, once, let's give it a shot. Cut looks pretty good. I found before, if you take a very sharp razor, you can kind of work off some of this extra little I don't know what you call it. it. Comes off really easy with a little with a little straight blade like this. And then if you really want to get that extra touch in there, hit it with a heat gun. Now we can put our new trimmed up fork parts. Oh my god, what happened? Oh, that's right. We got the rest of the uh, kit from Volta Supply, who did the full graphics kit on this bike. If you need graphics for your CR300L, they have the template because they use this bike. Hit them up. You can get whatever you want. You don't have to just get my kit. You can get my kit though if you want. Go for it. Dropping our new brake pads. You're about to push down on them when you pull that pin out because there's a little bit of spring tension on them. Outside one will drop out first. And get the inside one. Get the inside one in first. If we want, we can push back on these pistons a little bit if we think we need to push back the caliper. Put the pin back in, press down on them a little bit because again, there's a little bit of spring tension in it. Normally, you go behind the wheel and tuck the brake line down. It's all nice and happy. But if we did that, the brake line would be directly running into the tire. So we have to go to the outside now. It's not a big deal. Wrap around the fork like that. This part is the, probably the most annoying for most supermotos is putting the front caliper back on. The reason why is because we have a larger rotor in the front. We push the caliper out a little bit. Plus, we brought the tire in and it's wider, the rim. The clearance of trying to get this into here is super tight. On some bikes you actually have to pull the pads out, slip this in and try to slip the pads back up in while it's on the bike. Because we have this forged wheel, the space in here is a little bit better. We don't have these spokes coming right out at these crazy angles. I was kind of playing with this. I think we can just put this right in. <laughs> yes. That is too cool, man. It just goes right on. And we'll make sure that nothing's rubbing or touching weird in there. Everything's good, you're just hearing the new pads. These right angle valve stems are so sweet. I'm gonna check the tire pressure here. My bet is that these are a bit overfilled. I like to run my Motard wheels usually around the mid 20s. That should work. I'll do the same for the rear. Another thing we'll probably need to do is readjust our kickstand. Uh, if you hadn't seen the video, uh, one of the first things we did this bike was put an adjustable kickstand on it. The stock kickstand is way too short on this bike, so it's in the furthest length right now. I think we probably have to just go down one, maybe two at most. <laughs> I'm gonna get in some trouble with this thing, dude. It feels so light. Well, the Supermoto guys, yes. <laughs> Been too long since the XR was sold. This thing is gonna be sick, dude. Oh, look at the graphics. 
kind of reflective -y. Tomorrow I gotta go ride out with the boys and we'll get to see what this thing can do. Obviously the first few miles of this thing, you gotta let the brakes bed in, the tires are all new. You're not used to the bike. Five five miles, chill, and then, you know, do dank nooners. Have fun, right? Whatever, it's super moto. We'll go ride with the boys, we'll see how it does. That video is definitely already out on Patreon if you're seeing this the public version, because there's always a video ahead. So if you wanted to go over there, check out that, ver that video, and you also can see the uncensored extended version of this video and you can join our discord and hang out in there look at this thing though dude yeah.